Good morning, and thank you all for joining us today. I'm proud to be joined here this morning by Council President Marilyn Keith, Police Chief James Nice, thank you, and Fire Chief Clarence Tucker, thanks, Chiefs, and other representatives from our public safety and service departments. I'm grateful to have their support and of these hardworking men and women, and I thank them for all they do to keep our community safe and strong. I'd also like to acknowledge the members of Akron City Council that are with us today. Uh, Tara Moses Lample, Ward 5, Linda Amobian, uh, Councilwoman at Large, Robert Hoke, um, Ward 7, Jeff Fusco is Councilman at Large, Six. 6, I'm sorry, I messed that up already, and Jeff Wilhite from Summit County Council. Thank you all for joining us today. Today, I am announcing the city's proposal for a new one quarter percent income tax to fund police, fire, EMS, and streets here in Akron. As I discussed in my State of the City speech just a few months ago, the City of Akron continues to lose about $15 million every year from the elimination of fair tax sharing from the State of Ohio. And as a result of the recession, the City has lost an estimated $80 million in unrealized income tax revenue since 2000. Over the last several years, our City has continued to do more with less. We've made cuts across the board, reduced personnel, and consolidated services to reflect the City's continued revenue challenges. But increased efficiency and strict budgeting can only get you so far. You cannot and we will not be able to cut our way to prosperity. The foundation of any great city is its people, its great public services, and its strong public safety core. The last time our city passed an income tax increase for essential city services was 1981, which also happens to be the year that I graduated high school. That was almost 36 years ago. And it goes without saying that everything has changed since then. What cost a dollar in 1981 now costs almost three at $2.81, and that's nearly a threefold increase. These revenue challenges are hurting our ability to fund our most important assets our police and fire departments, and our essential public infrastructure. In today's modern environment, our safety forces are called upon to respond to changing threats and emergencies every day from battling the devastation of the opiate, epi opiate epidemic and fighting back against gun violence, to treating an aging population and safeguarding against cyber terrorism, all while serving as frontline ambassadors in our neighborhoods. Our police and fire departments do this difficult work with leaner personnel levels, older equipment, and less funding. Add to that the terrible condition of our streets. As mayor, the number one complaint that I've heard from residents across in the numerous town halls is that our roads are in deplorable condition. And as someone who drives and bikes every day on our roads, I couldn't agree more. That's why I'm coming forward with a plan to finally do something about it. Our city needs this tax. Without funding to replace the millions that we lose each year from the state and federal government, the city will be forced to make difficult budgeting decisions. And that will impact city services across the board. However, if passed, these additional funds will put us back on the road to stability. This one quarter percent levy will bring in an estimated $16 million per year to be spent on police, fire and EMS, and city streets. After careful deliberation, I've determined that now is the, now is the time to enact a reasonable, fair, and responsible one quarter percent tax. We must prioritize our police, fire, and EMS personnel by providing them with the equipment and facilities they need to protect our neighborhoods and businesses and to keep us all safe. I will not and we cannot allow our roads to deteriorate further if we expect our neighborhoods and business districts to thrive and it's time to invest back into Akron streets. This fair and reasonable increase will allow us to significantly improve streets across the city and we'll be able to pave and think about it an average of 43 more miles of roads every year and increase the amount of paving by about 300 percent. It will also allow us to maintain our public staffing levels, sustain a long-term body-worn camera system, and rebuild fire stations like this one and replace worn-out cruisers. As we seek to grow our population and revitalize our neighborhoods, our city needs and deserves this funding and the time is now. We must invest in our neighborhoods to keep them safe, strong, and stable. The additional tax will be paid by employed people who live or work in Akron, not retired persons or those who aren't working. 
Much of the funding raised through this proposal will be paid by commuters who work in Akron and use our roads and services every day. If successful, this proposal would raise Akron's income tax to 2.5%, which is consistent with our peer cities like Cleveland, Columbus, and Dayton, and the cost will be an additional $1.68 for an Akron resident with a median income of $35,000. Finally, regardless of whether this levy passes, I stand firm in my commitment to control spending. Even with the additional revenue, we must continue to explore ways to reduce spending, prioritize funds where they are needed the most. This coming Monday, I will present my plan to Akron City Council and ask them to support me in supporting public safety and roads in our city by placing the issue on the November ballot. Before I turn the microphone over to the chiefs to talk about the needs in their departments, I want to recognize a true partner in this effort, Council President Marilyn Keefe, who'd like to share a few words of her support. Good morning, and I want to thank the mayor for his leadership in what we are calling today a good day, a responsible day a day that all of us realize what our needs are here in the city. And I look at the people behind me, Chief Tucker, Chief Nice, the mayor, am I missing? And then all of these here, along with all of those along the wall, they deserve this. They deserve it more than you can know. I look up and I look at this ceiling, I've been in the basement of this house, it's time. It's time for us now to act responsibly and to bring forward to the voters a tax increase that, yes, we wish we wouldn't have to do this, but we have been working with less for long enough. We cannot cut to the bone any further than what we have cut. It isn't fair to my constituents that I represent in my ward, and it's not fair to the other constituents throughout the city. These are the core services. This is our promise. This will be used for our safety forces and for our roads. And I have two members of my council sitting in front of me here. I know what their phone calls are like. I have Bob Hoke sitting in the back here. He and I converse often about the condition of the roads. We need to address it now. For years, the city has suffered. We're now stepping up to the plate and we're saying this is what we need. We will hopefully bring it to our voters in November and let the voters decide. But as council president, I intend to work with my colleagues to support this issue so that in November we see it on the ballot and that I can say a proper thank you to the men and women in blue that daily, daily, have to sacrifice what they need to do their job. So thank you so much, and I believe you're gonna introduce yes. Chief Tucker. Thank you. <laughs> Chief, if you'd like to share a few words, please. Absolutely. Well, first off, thank you for coming here today. And thank, thank you, Mayor Horgan, for bringing this issue to the forefront. It's been an issue that's developed over the years. It didn't just happen overnight. We're here at Station 2 for a reason. Now, Station 2 was built in 1944, meaning it's 73 years old. Back when this station was built, the average weight of a fire truck was 15,000 pounds. The average weight of our fire trucks today is 43,000 pounds, or approximately three times as much. Now with that, the results are what I'm going to show you here later today. Uh, the floor is unable to support the vehicles that we have sitting in the bays where we're now sitting and standing. And so with that, we've had to put temporary supporting down in the basement to hold the floor up so that it would not collapse. Those temporary supports have been in place for over 10 years now, and it's time for us to do something about it. Uh, it is not uncommon for the firefighters that work in this station to walk through the basement and see a fresh piece of concrete that's fallen from the support system of this floor uh, at any given time. 
and that's not the only problem. On the opposite side of Market Street, over across from Acme Number 1, is Station 12, and it has very similar problems. It has the same type of supports holding that floor up. Also, uh, our fire trucks uh, need to be replaced at a regular routine interval. Uh, it is recommended that fire trucks get replaced after 15 years. They get removed from first line service at that point and then just become backup equipment. Well, we have two fire trucks in service today as first line equipment that were purchased in 1991 and each of them has over 100,000 miles on it. Now these vehicles go lights and siren to your emergencies every day and our emergencies are increasing but the safety of us getting to where we need to get is, is in jeopardy because of these vehicles and we do the best we can to maintain them. Uh, we have a very vigorous uh, maintenance schedule that, that tries to take care of these vehicles as best you can. But how many of us in here today are driving vehicles built in 1991? With that, um, again, we responded to 49,000 calls in the last year. And that's an increase of about 5,000 calls. And that is due in part due to the opiate issue, but our, our calls have been increasing every year for the last decade anyway. And with that, um, we are running out of fire trucks, is, is the bottom line. So ambulances go out to these calls, fire trucks go out, and probably once or twice a week or more, we are down to one vehicle left in the city still in service. So with that, we have been responding fire trucks like you see here, out as first responders, until we can get an ambulance there. So that increases the amount of calls that they're going on. And with that, um, we need to uh, improve not just the fire trucks, but other equipment that we have that we're using on these emergency calls. Uh, currently, we have sporadically around the city what we call um, extractors to remove carcinogens from fire gear. And those extractors should be in every fire station. Because as you know, when we go to a fire, in those fires there's all type of toxic chemicals. And our firefighters are being exposed to things all the time. So when they get back to the station, we need them to take that fire, set of fire gear off and throw it into an extractor to get the carcinogens off to try to reduce the, the potential for them to develop cancer. And we also don't want them bringing those same carcinogens into your house if they go to the next emergency call. So it's important all the way around to get rid of those things. And we sh again, the, the standard is to have them in every station. We have them only sporadically here in the city. And so uh, part of this uh, capital budget increase will be to make sure the equipment like that is, is maintained throughout the city and that we have those extractors in every station. Uh, furthermore, back when I was hired in 1988, we had two sets of fire gear for every fire gear for along the same type of reasons. If you have a fire and you come back, you can switch into a set that doesn't have carcinogens and you have time to put them in this extractor to get those carcinogens out. Well, today we have one set of fire gear for every firefighter. We cannot afford that second set. We just can't afford it. And it's a necessary piece of equipment that uh, it will prolong the lives of our firefighters. Firefighters develop cancer at more than three times the rate of our normal citizens, and that's part of the reason why. And we want to do everything we can to keep them safe. So we need to get them the necessary equipment to keep them that way. Uh, furthermore, we need to update our thermal imaging equipment. And again, this is just a few items of the stuff that we need to maintain. Now, thermal imager is similar to like a camera that we take to a fire scene and we can use it to determine where trap victims are in the fire. We use it to see through the smoke, as we say. And so with that, if we get to a house fire, we can determine pretty quickly, okay, they're in that second bedroom up on the second level. And, and get people there to try to, to get those people out, to rescue them. It also is for uh, saving firefighters in case a firefighter gets hurt, or trapped in a fire, we use it to locate that down firefighter and we can get them out as well. So these are, again, just a few items that we would be using this capital increase for. And uh, I want to thank Mayor Horgan and City Council for their support in this issue. And uh, we'll turn it over to 
back over to the mayor. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. <laughs> I think the chief laid out some pretty good technical um, reasons about uh, why this all needs. His key comment to me that they said, you know, we do our best every day. Well, your best is pretty good with substandard equipment. And I know many of us feel the same way. So thank you very much. <laughs> Without further ado, Police Chief James Nice, Akron Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. First piece of equipment that I would suggest that uh, Chief Tucker get is an air conditioning unit for Fire Station 2. <laughs> it's very hot in here. Thank you, Mayor. This is an important day for the City of Akron and for the Akron Police Department. This is an opportunity to enhance the safety in our neighborhoods and support the public safety forces in a very meaningful way. Our officers work hard every day to protect and serve our residents and our visitors. As the mayor mentioned, we're on the front lines of many public safety crises. The opiate epidemic, drug trafficking, gun violence, and cyber threats. We go to approximately 250,000 calls for service a year. We're going to 650 to 800 calls for service a day. We have patrol officers driving police cars that are 15 years old, many with over 100,000 miles on them, some with over 150,000 miles on them with holes in the floorboards. I kid you not when I say in the rain and in the snow, the officers have snow coming up through the floorboards onto their pant legs. It's ridiculous. In police circles, it's recommended that for these emergency vehicles, they be replaced and taken out of service at 60,000 miles. Like I said, some are driving cars rusted out with 160,000 miles. We're desperately in need of funding to be able to replace these vehicles in a timely manner. Our department is also launching the Body Worn Camera Program. I initiated this program. It's been going through the system. It takes a little while. And I know that Mayor Horgan supports the Body Worn Camera Program. It's a very expensive program to put body worn cameras on each officer. Just the storage of the data is $300,000 per year. Each year we have to come up with that 300,000 to continue to run body-worn cameras. I believe it helps our officers, I believe it helps the public, and as you know in this day and age when there's so much discussion about police and police activity, that gives us the truth of exactly what happened on that day on that call for service. And it's a very important program to the city of Akron. I agree with Chief Tucker that improving our streets and our safety in the neighborhoods is important. I speak for the police department when I say we're hopeful that the community, we're hopeful that city council members will support this initiative. This proposal is fair and it's the right thing to do. Thank you. Before I go any further, because I know it's warm out, I wanted to recognize City Councilman at Large Jeff Fusco, if I forgot about that earlier. Thanks, Jeff. 